These are the newest iPhones. They are the iPhones from 2019. Got yourself the iPhone 11, the 11 Pro, and the 11 Pro Max. These phones start around $700, and they go all the way up to $1,100. And if you change the storage options, it gets even more expensive than that. And up and coming here, you'll see the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. If you get the Note 10 Plus, that price increases. So the Note 10 is $949, and then the Plus size takes you over $1,000. And depending on whether or not you get yourself the 5G flagship, that could cost you anywhere upwards of $1,300. Very, very pricey devices. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is the SMT. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that I think, for some, it might be a little contentious. For me, it's pretty standard. Smartphone pricing. It's gotten expensive. And for some people, it's justified. They get the new technologies. They get new features. They get new hardware, and they're willing to pay the money. For others, a little more cost-sensitive. It might be a little bit more difficult to manage the cost of some of these new smartphones. Anyways, I got my hands on some new research of what's going on in the market. We're going to cover that in today's video. All of that starts now. To get things started, you always want to give credit to the source of the information. All of this research coming from NPD Group Mobile Phone Tracking Service. Uh, what they did was they collected some research from the market, looking at what consumers are buying and what they're, you know, doing in terms of spending money. And this research is showing and indicating that less than 10% of the general U.S. population is actually buying smartphones over the price of $1,000. As an extension of that data, it also indicates in the research study, most buyers are located in urban areas. So we're talking about metropolitan areas, larger cities. And in terms of the top 10 DMAs, they are accounting for 40% of these $1,000 or more smartphone purchases here in the U.S. Top DMAs in the U.S., we're talking about cities like New York, Chicago, Los Angeles. No, these are huge cities. These are places where maybe these devices actually matter to some people or people, you know, have that type of expendable income. It definitely doesn't seem that rural Americans are looking into buying $1,000 smartphones. Moving forward, you also got to think about where are these 5G cities going to be? Where are the markets that have millimeter wave spectrum assets? And where are these networks being built out to be taken advantage of? Most of the time, it's in these urban city centers, these huge metropolitan areas like New York City, Chicago, and other larger towns. We are definitely not going to be seeing Verizon's millimeter wave in small town Missouri or small town Ohio or small town Pennsylvania. It's always gonna be in these larger city centers. Another thing to consider and what's going on with the smartphone market is the fact that people are also holding on to their devices longer. We've seen uh, renewal cycles, people that are upgrading far less more frequently and they're holding on to the devices, some people two years, some people three years. You know, it's just become the standard. Most people are holding on to their devices longer than the typical one year upgrade cycle that the manufacturers produce them at. Here's why that trend may be changing pretty soon, especially in 2020. 5G is pretty much upon us. The networks are really going to kick up in 2020. In order to get access to 5G, you're going to need a totally new set of hardware. You're going to need, you know, phones that have different types of modems, different types of processors, and all of that is going to be available in the newer devices. So we're expecting people to kind of have to upgrade if they're going to take advantage of these newer types of network technologies. In case you didn't know, 5G phones are expensive. Most of them are exceeding $1,000, right around the $1,300 range. No word yet as to how much a 5G iPhone is going to cost, but you can bet it's going to be at least as much as a Samsung Galaxy Note 5G. So those are $1,300. So who knows, maybe with an Apple tax, we'll see something between $1,300 and maybe up to $1,500 for a 5G iPhone. And right now, I believe that the cheapest uh, 5G phone that's compatible on any network is a OnePlus model. It's the McLaren 5G of the OnePlus 7T Pro, and it's $899, and it's exclusive to T-Mobile. We get it. 5G is the future of networking, but we know that currently everything's really about LTE, but there's even issues there. I was able to find a report from OpenSignal looking at said topic on what's LTE in terms of its availability compared to 5G and even 3G. And here's what I found about 3G. According to OpenSignal, almost 20% of the United States wireless connections are actually on 3G. We're not even talking LTE right now. We are talking 3G, technology that was available 10 plus years ago. 
Consumers are still on that as their primary wireless connection. Wow. What we're seeing there is probably consumers that are holding on to old legacy devices, or it's a situation where wireless networks, whoever their provider is in the area, has not upgraded local sites or regional sites to any newer technologies. They're basically either you know, not adopting newer technologies or the wireless providers are not giving them anything better or newer than 3G. For those consumers, we've got to consider maybe doing something about encouraging wireless providers to get some semblance of 4G LTE in those regions and also maybe offer some kind of a, I don't know, like a subsidy program where there could be a, some kind of a funding or a program that could push those individuals to get discounts on newer devices and get out of those old legacy handhelds. You know, devices that are pushing 3G technology, I mean, that's just not gonna cut it. And they're kind of in the stone age when it comes to wireless tech. Here we are, here we are transitioning to 5G and they're still working primarily on 3G. To kind of wrap things up, I think moving forward, the $1,000 phone is almost inevitable when you're talking about flagship devices. Even, you know, you think about a phone like the what the OnePlus offers, they're really nice. They're flagship level devices. And when you add 5G into the component, you know, they do get pricey. They're still 900 bucks. If you're going to be going anything like Samsung, more premium like that, you're looking at 1300 I think almost to the point where you've got to start thinking to yourself, well, if I'm going to be getting into 5G or if I'm going to be buying these new flagships and I can't do a thousand dollar phone, when am I going to get something more affordable? And to that, we're probably not going to be seeing anything until the end of 2020, where we're actually going to see mid-range devices that are 5G compatible or even entry level devices that are 5G compatible. Who knows? Those phones might be you know that are mid-range they might be six or seven hundred bucks and something on the low end might be something like four or five hundred some of these customers that want to get on 5g connections but can't afford it are going to be struggling with this price point point. and besides 5g technology isn't even really mature yet you may be looking at an lt only device and it still might be looking at a thousand dollars or more depending if you're going something premium like samsung or something premium like apple those devices are not cheap and those companies are commanding you to spend at least a thousand dollars to get into their latest and greatest flagships if i could offer anybody solutions it's play the waiting game you know wait for 5g to mature to the point where the networks are actually ready that's just good consumer behavior. Maybe also look into buying used or, you know, like sparingly used. Maybe something that's in good condition secondhand from like Swappo or eBay or some other solution that can get you a nice chunk of that first initial cost kind of shaved off. You know, maybe a $1,300 phone that's a newer phone, you know, brand new from Samsung or Apple. Maybe you could find it secondhand, lightly used on one of those platforms for like half the price after five or six months of usage. Even just waiting to buy new but holding off for a few months could save you several hundreds of dollars. So that might be an option for some as well. Flagships are super, super pricey. Premium isn't even the, you know, doesn't even start to explain the pricing there. I don't see that trend changing. I think phones will be expensive moving forward. And especially when you look at new, uh, new technology like 5G, which is going to be taking advantage of that. And of course, early adopters can kind of expect this. But for the general, you know, average consumer, it's kind of the situation where you just gotta wait and wait for pricing to kind of balance out and become more mainstream. That's the current research. That's the current state of hardware in terms of pricing and what's going on. You guys let me know what you think of the research from Open Signal, as well as from the uh, original research group that I noted, and then kind of my take on things and market analysis. You know, that's, it's just kind of the way it is at this point in time. I don't know what we could do as consumers, except you either buy it or you don't. And it's really up to you and what you can afford and what you're choosing to spend on with your wireless technologies. All right, SMT Nation, go ahead and sound off in the comment section below. I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Give me, you know, something of commentary, you know, get the discourse going down there in the comment section. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. The pulse of the people always appreciated here on the SMT YouTube channel. And let's do shout outs. We got the Discord server. Put links in the description for that. We'll also do the Patreon shout outs. Got a link in the description box for that as well. Uh, we got the Sneed Tech Twitter handle. Uh, we also have the podcast links are down there. If you want to listen to the SMT Wireless Report down there, we're on your favorite podcasting apps. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Breaker. We're on Radio Public. We're on Spotify. Check us out there. We've got a few episodes up and coming, and uh, we've got a couple uploaded already. So check those links out down there in the description box. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, hit that like button. 
do me a solid, help the channel out quite a bit. Go ahead and share this to your favorite social media. That would be awesome, and I thank you greatly for that. And that wraps it up for this one. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Thank you again for watching. I'm the SMT, and I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.